what we're about to dive into now is the continued dismantling of my alma mater, the continued um, disgrace of my former schools. The school board here has become, and I, I'm specifically talking about the Central Bucks School Board in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, has become a laughing stock, has become a political battleground week after week, month after month, and now year after year, more so in the last three to four years, but the last two years have dramatically increased the level of vitriol and hate. In fact, the event that I alluded to in the beginning of this episode tonight is requiring police presence because of the people at this meeting last night, not the left wing, not the centrists, the right wingers that are threatening people, the, the right wingers that continue to perpetuate threats under the, under the guise of the assumption that they can get away with it, the assumption that nobody's going to stand up to them, the assumption that they have all the power in this dynamic. The Central Buck School Board, as we've discussed a number of times, has been featured in The Daily, which is a daily podcast by the New York Times. It has been covered in local media. It has been covered in uh, Pennsylvania media. It has been covered in national media more broadly. And it's never good. When I went to school in Central Bucks, I was proud. I was proud to be a Central Bucks West buck when I played football, when I played baseball, when I was in the choir. I was proud when I went to Penn State and I could say I came from, you know, Bucks County. I came from Central Bucks and people knew it. People knew it for being a good school. It helped me get into school, I'm sure. It helped me get, I'm sure it helped me get into grad school on some level. Um, I will say that Tabitha Delangelo, who is being vehemently attacked by the other school member, school board members, as well as uh, the other two Democrats on the board, but specifically Tabitha, and the video we will watch is called out. Um, Tabitha single-handedly has helped more people than anybody I know in local office. She has inspired me to go to grad school. She wrote a letter of recommendation that helped me get into an Ivy League school. Let just imagine, um, and I'm not doing this to brag. I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college, period. Not, not Ivy League school, not some, you know, not Stanford. I went to Penn State. And I graduated. I'm the first person in my entire family to do so. And at the same time, I was inspired and supported and lifted up and told to go after it and got into UPenn with a recommendation from Dr. Tabitha Delangelo, who, as we will talk about here in a second, is a teacher of teachers. She is a professor. The, the meaning that for me personally, the anger I feel personally as I watch people that never, maybe, maybe some of them did, but that never went to these schools, dismantle, degrade the teachers, degrade the institution degrade the staff broadly speaking meaning the support staff the you know just the janitorial staff etc by politicizing and yes everything is political clearly as we will talk about in this clip but everything being political does not make it that everything has to be partisan. 
everything being political could mean something as simple as political being on the football team. The football coach is picking somebody based on parent politicking. It does not necessarily mean a partisan bias. Every decision is a choice, and every choice in policy is political. Because whether we like it or not, it doesn't mean that it's not bipartisan. It does not mean that it's universal. It does not mean that it's uh, extremist. It doesn't mean that it's radical. But every decision and every choice requires that. A choice. And a choice is inherently political. I don't watch the Central Bucks school board meetings anymore because it's disheartening. When I had my Achilles rupture, I would listen and watch um, while I was just basically plastered to the couch because we had an election for it. We've had teachers removed from a school that I live within walking distance from because he had pride flags in his classroom and he provided resources to support trans youth. He was, he was let go initially initially, and then just moved to another school quietly to keep people quiet. The school has proposed, I should say, school board has proposed book bannings, which have passed, the implementation of which we have not seen the full uh, effect of yet. And now policy 321 which is in, which originally had the intent to get rid of all political uh, iconography, symbols, flags, anything that is could be interpreted as political. This includes, of course, re religious stuff as well, which, being that it's January, last month could have meant any sort of celebrations for the holidays because any sort of um, celebration for the holidays could be deemed religious or could be deemed political if the right person were to to bring up the case and argue with the case because that's all this is, is a choice based on the superintendent and the people that are uh, implementing and providing the decisions on these suggestions. You want to call them that? You couldn't have a Ukraine flag because despite Bucks County having an extreme, an extremely high amount of Eastern Europeans, specifically Ukrainians living here in this, in this county, it would be deemed political because you were taking a political stance, even though I think even the right wingers, most of them, unless they watch Fox News, Tucker Carlson, um, don't support Putin, don't support Russia. If I'm giving them at least the benefit of the doubt that they don't give us. These six board members, because it is controlled six to three by the Republicans, passed a map a school board redistricting map for their own districts, again, seemingly taking inspiration from state representatives, state senates, and Congress, where they, the, elected, uh, the elected officials choose their constituency rather than con the constituency choosing their elected officials, gerrymandered a map, which we have talked about previously on this show, that, that put more Democrats into the three uh, the three Democratic seats that exist right now, thus creating a perpetual six to three majority, which was voted six to three because there was no public comment, because there was no way to stop it as of right now. More on that probably to come because there are things that are being taken 
in action to do that because that is not how democracy works. This is not how a republic works. This is not how people want to be represented in central bucks. And if people like me and people like you have any say, we will continue to voice our opinions. We will continue to vote in progressive people, democratic people, frankly, anybody that believes in insanity and not just in, in, in just letting insanity rather than we believe in sanity. They, they are using insanity to rule with an iron fist and being a petri dish for far-right propagandists across the country trying to pass this stuff in school boards. Now, I know that Penn Ridge School Board and um, Council Rock School Boards, which are just neighbors, look towards Central Bucks for what to do. And some of them uh, are, are, are going to follow in the footsteps of this stuff. Now, I think th policy 321, again, banning these certain symbols and, and, and flags and all that, is not the most controversial of the policies that have been passed. Because now, based on pushback from the community, they, because let's, and, and the interpretation, again, is still up in the air. There is not a definitive decision on this. The original policy included, and I'm going to see if I can pull up the, the original here while I'm doing this, but the original included uh, bans on political... I'll just show you. This is this is an article from the Bucks County Courier Times, reported by Chris Ullery, who is an actually really good journalist. He does fair reporting, not just one side bias reporting. Um, he is not explicitly Democratic. He is not explicitly Republican. He has done good interviews with me, um, etc. And I I support his uh, his reporting here in the Bucks County Courier Times. He's doing real legitimate reporting. The original draft. Um, had controversial policy restricting, and this is me reading, displays of, quote, political, sociopolitical, sexual orientation, gender identity, or religious beliefs. So, what happens is that existing, because remember, there are no symbols in being um, uh, heterosexual, right? The symbols exist for the LGBTQ plus community because they've been historically marginalized and oppressed, not just in this country, but the globe all over. The coexist symbol, which suggests that this radical notion that people should coexist based on all different religions or non-religion people should coexist based on all forms of gender and sexual orientation we should all just exist be accept each other for what we are a symbol like that is now banned a symbol of the ukrainian flag even if you are Ukrainian, would be banned or could be interpreted as political. Now, of course, you can have military flags because those are exempt. Now, and again, I'll say this. I am a supporter of our military. I'm a supporter of our veterans. Specifically, I'm more of a supporter of our active duty members and our veterans than I am the institutions of the military, but regardless, it goes somewhat without saying that the military is political. But of course, that's an exception. You can put a Marine flag up because, hey, we have to recruit people somewhere, right? 
Now, maybe that's just a jaded and rough, non-benefit of the doubt position. And and yeah, I am angry because people people will say, "Oh, you look so angry. You're you look you seem angry about this." I am angry. Oh, you're triggered, lib. Yeah, I, I well, first of all, I'm not a liberal, but I I am triggered because this is the type of nonsense that is driving people away from moving here. It 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 makes kids that are. I'm going to put it this way, and this is not to otherize or any sort of, you know, demonize anybody watching this or a kid that is in school, but kids that are broadly speaking different than the heteronormative uh, average in the school, they are, they actually are otherized by having stuff like this. Now, to be fair... Students are allowed to, you know, have a pin on or do whatever, and that's fine. A student's allowed to do that. But providing a safe space in a school, in a classroom, would not be allowed in Central Bucks. Again, I, I, I go back to what we were talking about with Brazil. In the national symbol... Of the American flag. And again, I am not arguing that we should ban the American flag. I, I said, I have my American flag right there. I, I love the American flag. I love America. I love Bucks County and I love Central Bucks. But I do not like what is going on in the Central Bucks school board. And you could argue that if you want to interpret this new policy... The American flag is certainly a political symbol. Now, one that most of us, 99.9% .9 of us all agree is a, a good symbol. It means freedom, prosperity, liberty, all these broad principles. But if a Ukrainian flag is political, or any sort of country's flag is political, but the military, you can have those, and the American flag, you can have that. Which, like, of course, we should have the American flag. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm not the one proposing the ban. The same way that, like, I'm not proposing a ban on the fountainhead and the nonsense that is proposed in Ayn Rand's uh, books. I'm not proposing a, a ban on the bi biography of Ronald Reagan. Like, they are trying to ban the diary of... Um, uh now now I'm I'm drawing a blank. But you know uh Anne Frank, the diary of Anne Frank, which is just absolute lunacy to want to ban a telling of the Holocaust because it's political, which actually has happened in Central Bucks. I am not making that up. That was a proposal in Central Bucks. Now it wasn't a most recent one, but I'm sure it will come up. I'm sure it will come up. This is a video because I can't, I could sit here and rant and rave all day, but I want to point again, once again, talk about before this, because this is going to be the nonsense. This, these are Republican school board members playing the victim as they perpetually do, trying to say that Abitha Delangelo and Mario Mahmood and Karen Smith, the three Democrats on the board are trying to indoctrinate children into all this radical political stuff by just saying that maybe we should have it's okay to have because the thing is, is they're not saying that every classroom should have or needs to have a pride flag or have symbols that say it's okay to be you it's okay to exist i'm a supporter of you you know i had a teacher I'll say this just a quick story real quick. And again, I am, I am, as they'll talk about, I'm sure I am a straight white male. I'm young, but I am a straight white male. And when I was in school, because I played sports, I had a teacher, a social studies teacher. I'll leave his name out just for his own sake. Um, 
but it's not a bad story. It's a good story where I was having a hard time. You know, I was depressed. I had a lot of different things going on and I never talked to anybody about this really, but he could tell that something was up and he asked me, Connor, stay after class. Can you, uh, I want to talk to you about something. And I did. And, and, and it was about, you know, I, I don't even remember. It was probably about football or something like that. But he provided me a safe space for me to talk through my feelings because I, my old um, guidance counselor is actually in this video. You'll see too. Um, but I didn't feel like I needed to go to a guidance counselor. I didn't feel like I needed to do any of that stuff. I was just upset. And he provided me a safe space to talk with him and answer, provide answers for me and, and guide me and just be there as a support. Which is all that those symbols are giving to kids. This, uh, like, I, 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 I don't understand the vitriol. I don't understand this performative BS, as you'll see in this video. And I'm, I'm skipping over. Um, Deborah Cannon's performative speech where she's talking about her having a disability and like I understand but also if you're trying to ban all these things and she's talking about disability technically speaking any sort of support for um, you know displaying support for like people based on the ADA is political like it's something that i support <laughs> but it's technically political like this is where if you want to play these semantic games if everybody wants to play these semantic games and say oh tabitha said in an article published you know in 2019 in academic journal by the way um that you know choices are political and um critical theory is necessary to analyze the world based on viewing the world through different lenses which is what critical race theory is it's the, it is crit based on critical theory which is viewing the le viewing through the lens of different uh viewing the world through different lenses critical theory could be based on class could be based on race could be based on, based on gender all this different stuff but these people want to say that oh she wants to implement critical race theory in schools and teach them teach these kids that which is not even close to the case this is not something that critical race theory is not being te taught to kids nobody wants to do that nobody rational wants to do that nobody within the realm of actual the le the actual levers of power want to do that it is necessary or teachers to learn that type of thing so that they can analyze and learn okay i might look a certain way and my student might look a certain way and they might be different and i have to meet them where they are the same way that you would meet a person with a disability where they are and help them in central bucks specifically central bucks west my high school had a robust system for people with disabilities and that was something that was important to me because I was friends with those kids I was helpful for those kids and they helped develop my school and gave me an experience to learn from them and to develop as a human being around people that are different is good being around people that have different experiences is good All that's to say that the people that need the support that have hit, that have historically been oppressed, that have had not, not had their um, voices heard, have been historically voiceless, are being pushed aside and being said, saying, you're too political. But let's take a listen to this. This is one of the school board members. I believe it's Sissio, a Republican, right before the vote, and I'll show you the vote for the policy 321 to pass. Do you want to know where I was on Friday night after working all day? Friends, enjoying another one of my kids making. And so, sorry for this. The video is a little choppy. I have it sped up a little bit. 
and I'm sure the volume is probably all out of whack, but um, this is what I got public access. So um, the video kind of pauses. So if you're listening and it goes quiet, it's just the video stuttering. But this is um, Lisa Sissio also, you know, LARPing and trying to act cool and say, like, uh, I wasn't she wasn't upset on Friday, which last Friday was January 6th, where people were gathering to remember the attack on the Capitol. Of course, they don't care about that because that's too political. But, you know, she wants to talk about how she was praying for the Democrats making small improvements in his first season in a new sport. I nursed the child through the night. I spent the morning what many people in our community do listening to my son sing his little heart out in our children's choir. Then I did something really radical. I prayed. In fact, I prayed for and Miriam. I prayed that you would see. So she, she just said, and it cuts out. She said she's praying for Tabitha, Karen, and Miriam, which are the Democrats on the board. What you, yeah, I know it's pretty radical, right? Um, I prayed that you would see what you were doing is wrong. I prayed that you would stop defaming and demonizing the good people on this board. I prayed that you would stop using vulnerable and innocent children as pawns. I know it's a long shot, but I hope my prayers are answered. I pray for that regularly. Because painting the good people on this board as some sort of extremist so that you can justify implementation of your radical ideas in our classrooms is wrong. Demonize the radical ideas, again, being that you as a kid are accepted here no matter who you love, no matter uh, how you identify, no matter what religion you practice, you are loved, you are welcome, which is such a radical idea so so out there oh my god i'm so scared of people being accepted oh my god the persecution no rising us because you think you can get people in our own communities to hate us to hate our children and shame us into submission is wrong nobody wants us to hate your kids really i don't even care if people know who you are um I'd rather people not know who you are, and I'd rather be the school board just passes things that are actually useful for kids. Nobody should be attacking kids. Nobody should be going after kids. Nobody should be threatening school board members. And yet, I know firsthand of the threats towards the Democrats. Literal threats. I know that they have been maybe stalking my PA. And I don't know who does this, right? But I know what happens because there's been videos and pictures that have been published online of the Democratic uh, school board members' children. But yeah, this is... You, you go ahead and um, get up on your high horse and still continue telling us about how radical acceptance is. What you didn't count on, though, is that the people in our communities are smarter, kinder, and more moral than you give them credit for. What you seem to forget is that most people... Oh, 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 by the way, by the way... What she's not telling anybody is, is that the, the districts right now are still are gerrymandered. So the people that are the people in Bucks County more broadly, which, by the way, is a fact, but Central Bucks especially. There are more Democrats than Republicans. There are more people that are accepting of LGBTQ plus people because in Central Bucks, social social liberalism is the norm. And I mean social liberalism broadly. I mean just accepting people for who they are. But because they control the board six to three, they feel like they can rule with an iron fist. People in our community don't spend their weekends at fake press conferences and protests. They spend their weekends like me, like the other good people on this board. Maybe your adoring press has... So um, this is cutting out, but... She's looking at Tabitha saying, your adorning press, the adoring press that wants to, I don't know what, just because apparently the press loves um, the Democrats on the school board. I don't know where she's getting that, but good for you. Keep going. So you call them too. When I ran for the seat, I spoke openly about why I felt compelled to do so, to protect innocent children. Today, of course, Dr. of course, she's saying innocent children, only the ones that are not gay, trans, uh, queer, bisexual, lesbians, um, people of different colors, people of different religions, people that are non-religious, people that don't necessarily um, 
believe in the same things as them but yeah you just want to protect kids because here's the, here's the real thing is that they all they they ran on was protecting kids broadly speaking i'm putting that in quotes by saying that they should be in school without masks not having vaccines not caring about the safety of students not caring about the safety of teachers not really advocating for any sort of flexibility they just wanted kids in schools and that's it dr delangelo you are an educator of educators I should actually be thanking you for your recent public comments and antics, especially the ones that you uh, shed some light on tonight, Mrs. Cannon. Thank you. Your words speak for themselves. You are the reason this district needs policy 321. I call the question. Second. Second. by Mr. Pepper. Uh, all those in favor? Well, actually, should we do a roll call? Please. Here's the vote on the policy. Mrs. Cannon? Yes. Ms. Calabi? Yes. Dr. Delangelo? No. Dr. Mahmoud? No. Mr. Pepper? Yes. Mrs. Cizio? Yes. Mrs. Smith? No. Mrs. Boswell? Yes. President Hunter? Yes. Motion passes. There you go. That is six Republicans, three Democrats voting straight party line yet again on a policy that is horrible. Now, this is a the website that I, I will suggest you go to if you care about this stuff. Advocatesforinclusiveeducation.org. This is a um, the organization that is having the event tonight. It is nonpartisan. Believe it or not, you can talk about politics without being partisan. You can talk about what's happening in uh, the school board without being partisan. Um, they outline how the policy is fundamentally based on banning removal and exclusion cannot uh, of political symbols, basically. Uh, they say, and I'm just going to read these headlines for everybody, if it passes, which it did, it will likely restrict factual and open discussions about current events, American history, race, gender, sexual orientation, and more. Stifle classroom, culture, and learning. Fail to prepare students for the real world. Perpetuate a hostile and fe fearful learning environment for many. Incite harassment and witch hunts against teachers. Now, I'll loop back to the, the uh, article by Chris Ullery where he has an example of something that is, and I'm going to try to find it. Okay. In an example discussed in, Sept in a September school board meeting was whether a, quote, save the whales poster could be up in a sp Spanish teacher's classroom because they don't discuss explicitly in the curriculum environmentalism or protecting animals, ecology, biology, any sort of thing like that. And, um, there's not a clear answer. There's no clear answer because this is a certain thing that is environmentalism partisan? Is environmental environmentalism political? Maybe. Maybe. I'll close with this by saying these people are costing, these people, meaning the six Republicans, are costing the taxpayers that they claim to want to be responsible to, which is BS, they're costing the taxpayers $15,000 per month. Not $15, not $150, not $1,500, $15,000 per month in legal fees paying for consultants. That does not include... The legal fees that I'm sure are coming for the lawsuits from the ACLU based on different policies that have been passed, including the book ban. So, yes, I am pissed off, but the way that you can take action is that this year there are uh, multiple school board seats up in the Central Buck School District, two of which I have jurisdiction over as the chair of the Dallas Sun Democrats. So stay tuned on how to get Democrats elected to those positions that they will not be falling in line with this nonsense and taking a stand for justice, equality, and liberty of students, teachers, staff, uh, and everyone in between and not wasting taxpayers' money. How about that?